Uh, listen, can we talk to you a bit about boxing as well? Because of course. Because Francis Ngannou famously was yep, uh, of course yep. a heavyweight fighter. And I'm friends with Tyson Fury. I've been friends with him for a long time. So you, you are, you've sparred with him? I've sparred with him a lot. Okay. What, what do you make of the crossover then between UFC fights? Is it something you would ever think about? I mean, the money that you guys can make in, in that crossover is just astronomical. Yeah, I actually got asked about this on an interview recently and it was kind of... Uh, I don't know, the headline looked different than it should have looked like. I was asked about it and I kind of agreed to it, but I've got loads of work to do in the UFC before I start even start thinking about that. But it, it is, on the other hand, it's definitely something I'd like to do before I retire, definitely. But right now I want to go and unify the division and, and beat all the contenders before I even think about that kind of stuff. You said that Tyson Fury is a good friend of yours. Yes. Um, you obviously know Francis Ngannou, who obviously was the heavyweight champion in the world in the UFC. Yep. Did it surprise you, that fight? Very much so. I'm very surprised by it. Um, Tyson's talent is absolutely incredible. Like, he's amazing. And uh, Tyson, uh, sorry, Francis Ngannou's raw when it comes to boxing, but he's obviously improved a lot. Like, it's a credit to him and his coaches. Like, he, he really showed a lot of patience in that fight, which I wasn't expecting. I think it, it probably threw Tyson off as well. And I don't know, I'm still shocked by that fight and how mm. good Ngannou who, really did in that who, fight. Who did you, honestly, who do you think won it? I can't score boxing because I'm not as educated as I am on the on uh, with the boxing scoring as I am on the MMA scoring. But I think Tyson maybe edged it because he, he's your mate. Because he's my mate. <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Right? <laughs> At least you're honest. I'm all, obviously he's, he's my mate. I've got a, a close relationship with him, a personal relationship. Yeah. And I think when when you've got a, a horse in the race, you're always. Looking, yeah, you're, you're always like. Okay, let me ask you this: Do you think he underestimated his opponent? Do you think he trained properly for that fight, as if he were going to fight? Let's just say uh, he's going to fight um, Anthony Joshua. I know he trained pro properly for the fight. I know he did. I wasn't involved in his training camp, and I know people that were, and I know he took it very serious. I don't think he underestimated him either. I think that Francis Ngannou is just an absolute specimen, and he he looked amazing. Like he should be absolutely proud of himself for what he did in that performance. It was incredible from Francis Ngannou. Is he somebody that you looked at you'd have liked to a fault? Ngarni. Francis Ngannou yeah, yeah of course mate I've never turned the fight down in my life you can ask anybody who's involved with the UFC any of the matchmakers any of the promoters like every fight I've been offered I've said yeah so I, I wouldn't start with Francis Ngannou that would be absolutely no issues uh, you're a big boxing fan right Love so boxing. we can get your view on uh, what, what do you make of the, the bill that's just recently announced AJ Wilder they're fighting on the same night December the 23rd not fighting each other yeah. is that a disappointment we, we touched on just before the break the fact that in UFC you only get the yeah. big fights and of course in boxing you don't yeah well, let me tell you, I'm a massive boxing fan. I absolutely love the sport of boxing. I absolutely can't stand the boxing model. Hate it. Hate the way that boxing's going at the moment because I love the sport of boxing. I love the science. I love the, the defensive techniques, which is amazing. I absolutely love watching like actual classic traditional boxers who are defensively brilliant. Like It's my favourite thing. The way the sport's going at the moment is absolutely terrible. The way that you look at, you can literally look at a card, you can look at an Eddie Hearn show, a Frank Warren show, who any other promoter's show and, and know, say there's 10 fights on, you can know at least eight of the winners before the bell rings on any of the mm. fights. I can't stand it. Just look at that, for example. We're talking about the top guys in the world. None of them are fighting each other. What is this? Whose fault is that? I don't know whose fault it is. See, the promoter's fault. I'm sure the fighters are all in and they're trying to fight each other, but I've been around plenty of boxers in my time in combat sports loads of them and it's almost like mate no one's let them in on the joke yet that some of them are going 20 and older getting to a world title level and they've got this big entourage around them they're these superstars they're getting paid all this money they've got all these big sponsors backing on them and it's all it's almost like no one said mate you've not had a fight yet you, yeah. you're 20 and 0 against 20 punch bags let's be honest human punch bags a lot of the time you got a guy there who's 18 and 0 fighting a guy who's 5 and 15 like, that's not sport, mate. It's straight up dangerous, and I don't like to see it. Like, me as a boxing fan, I can hardly watch boxing anymore. I just think it's not like... When when a sport happens, it's two teams or two people fighting each other or whatever the sport might be, and the, the whole definition of sport is you don't know who's going to win. Mm. Whereas in boxing, it's not like that anymore, and I just think it's getting to the point where it's becoming dangerous and uncomfortable to watch. Okay, uh, listen. Our time is up with you. We've had half an hour. It's so annoying. That went very fast. Can we can we steal you for like another week next time? Uh, probably <laughs> not. Probably. I'm what, pretty busy. Just, just <laughs> okay. On the back of that, what are you doing now? The next fight is going to be John Jones. We don't know when. So, what are you doing between now and then? I'm still training twice a day. I'm very dedicated to my craft, and I'm constantly evolving. And I think that 
I'm very, very motivated right now. I don't think that, like, I've not reached the title level and been like, right, I can rest. i am reached the title level and like, oh, my God, all these killers are coming for me and I've got a lot more work to do and I need to be prepared for that. So I had, for like, five, six days off back in the gym training twice a day and that's what I'm doing. Okay, well, listen, um, thank you so much. We're big fans thank of you. yours. Thank um, you very much. Uh, I will pass your details to Noel. Please and do. And he will be walking you out the next time Please, you defend your title. that be incredible. That would be our pleasure. Good luck trying to beat the world record on the punch machine. Oh, you nearly did it. I nearly, just I nearly did it and I only had a couple of goals, so let me a couple more. You I'll do it, it before you go? Well, I've got a sore hand, my right hand sore, oh, which is go. my powerful Excuse hand. No, I, I just punched a massive Russian <laughs> in the head got... a couple of weeks ago. It's sore <laughs> with tiny Wait, gloves on, so... The, the amount of people that use that excuse, honestly. Okay, well, I'm not using it. <laughs> okay, well, don't, don't injure yourself. Okay. All right, okay. don't injure yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder that UFC 296 is available on TNT Sports on Saturday the 16th of December. Thank you again for coming in. Cheers, Tom. Talk Sport Drive. Super opinionated sporting debate. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.